Welcome to my desert home. Yep. So, uh, please subscribe and and click that uh, that bell looking icon for notifications. And um, always check the description below the video because then you might get a little bit more information about the clips that I put in there and also any any mistakes I made in the Bible study I'll try to correct them there okay thank you for watching okay it's uh, July 7th this was poured and the uh, finished it except for one thing there's no no grooves in it to keep the uh, the stuff from cracking erratically all all cement cracks sooner or later that's why they put those grooves in it to give it a place to crack in a straight line but the guy said oh he's gonna do that with a some kind of a I don't know what he called it his, his English is just a little bit better than my Spanish and that's not too good but anyhow he's going to uh, cut lines into it now I never heard of him doing that before but he's the contractor not me so anyhow here it is he put a light broom finish on it he said he didn't put a heavy brooming on it because it's not going to be an outside slab but it's going to have a building over it well, that's okay, because I was thinking that really the best thing for a garage is a smooth finish. Didn't I tell you yesterday to stay off this thing? You just don't listen, do you? Well, cats are curious. And you know what they say, curiosity killed the cat. Satisfaction brought it back, so anyhow... I don't know if he's going to come back today because he said Thursday and today is a Thursday. Anyhow, he'll either be here today or tomorrow to, to pick, take the forms out and to, uh, to uh, kind of build up a, the dirt around it. Anyhow, he said way over there. You know, it's closer in real life than it is on the cameras, but he said way over there where those trees are, there behind the trees, he's got another job doing the same thing. Some guy's gonna, gonna get a, uh, a Quonset hut, steel building, and he's, his is gonna be 30 by 30, so it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a big square. <laughs> I've never... I never, I didn't even know they had one. I don't think Steelmaster has a 30 by 30. So it's probably not the same brand as mine. But those cats seem to like to scratch themselves. Roll around on this slab. Yeah. Uh, a guy I met in town said that he knows somebody who might, might want to help me put this up and he's supposed to call me sometime soon. I've already talked to him on the phone uh, over the weekend and I told him the slab is going to be poured on the 6th and I don't know I don't know when he's going to call me back about this guy that he knows. Anyhow, the Lord will send somebody. He sent somebody to do this. And uh, it's a good job. It's a good job. Uh, I think he took out a little bit more dirt than he intended to because he told me he had estimated 17 yards of cement. And <laughs> it took 22. So. Alrighty. Well. You probably won't see this for another week or so, but I thought I'd get out here while it was still fresh. Let's take a look at it. 
Okay. Um, I made sure it's still it's still July seventh. It's July seventh, and uh, as you may recall, if you watch previous videos, that I made sure to get that that mess all mowed down before they delivered the cement, and uh, I had to use I had to use. Uh, Uh, a universal head on a on a shaft that doesn't come with the uh, <laughs> with my weed eater came with another one that uh, quit working years and years ago. Anyhow, I had ordered a head for the, my proper shaft the, the, from the factory instead of just trying to find a universal one. And it came yesterday. <laughs> yeah. Well, it came a day too late, or two two days too late. Anyhow, I just thought I'd I'd show you that. I think it's amusing. Of course, and a lot of things I think are funny, other people don't think so. Okay, I hope I got it this time. I'm watering the slab. Uh, it's my second and third time today watering the slab. Second time trying to uh, get a video of it. Uh, what this does is it helps the, uh, the cement to cure, or to dry out and cure evenly. Because uh, they say cement, as it dries, it gets it gets hard. Well, you want it to be getting hard evenly, right? I think that's what it's for. But anyhow, I I had worked with a landscape contractor back in the 80s. Uh, I. Worked for him a couple of months in the summer of 84. After I got out of jail and I found out I couldn't get a job anywhere. But, you know, when you're fresh out of jail, people don't trust you for nothing. Anyhow, I, uh, my, I, I, I told my probation officer I just can't seem to get a job and he hooked me up with this guy it's a landscape contractor he he had been in prison he told me he'd been in prison for 14 years and he got out and couldn't get a job so when he finally got his own company started doing landscaping and I don't know exactly how he started, but he eventually wound up doing, you know, got a contractor's license and everything. And that means you do more than just the, mow the grass and prune the trees. You put in slabs like this, you know, driveways and walkways and, and build fences and gazebos and everything. And uh, I worked for him for two months. And uh, he was obviously, he was obviously an ex-convict who hadn't t totally gotten rid of his ways, let me say that. The thing is, is that uh, he had a bit of a temper and he also wasn't exactly as clean as he wanted the, uh, People liked my probation officer to think. Uh, there's like this one kid that he had, he had working with him, who was friends. Well, his mother was friends with this guy. That's how he got the job. And he told me, oh yeah, well, while we're working, he's out getting a beer. And every once in a while, he'll go on a 
a cocaine or a meth binge and then then he'll really go out and get a bunch of jobs and we'll be working real hard but he would he would be the he's the kind of boss that would see you digging a ditch come up and grab the shovel out of your hand and go this is how I want you to do it and just get down in the ditch and go bam 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 I want to see the dirt flying then he'd get get out of got it out and after about four or five minutes he'd hand you the, the shovel and say that's what I want to see dirt flying and he'd get in his truck and take off <laughs> anyhow I got sick and uh, I didn't get my last paycheck from him even though he came to the hospital he didn't bring my money with him <laughs> Okay, but I don't know, everybody thought I was dying anyhow. Next time I seen him was years later, and I stopped to talk to him, and uh, he didn't even remember me. I didn't bring up the fact that he should just handed, reach in the pocket and hand me 200 bucks for that last paycheck. Anyhow. Ah, it was 1984. I uh, almost died. I was sick with uh, hairy cell leukemia. Supposedly a very rare form of leukemia. Uh, I looked it up somehow. I can't remember because I didn't know how to do. I didn't know how to use a computer back then, but somehow I found that there. There was only about 2,000 people in the United States with this that disease at the time. And Stanford was doing a, a study on it with interferon, trying to see if interferon would cure it. Well, interferon was a, was a new thing at the time. They didn't know exactly what they could use it for. All they knew it was a... It was a chemical in your body that uh, healed things, but we didn't have enough of it in our bodies to heal something like cancer and stuff like that. that I think I think they're using it for for viruses now. But anyhow, it did send me into partial remission. I had to shoot it into my, you know, like a like insulin. Like uh, diabetics do, shooting up insulin. I had to shoot it into my, under my skin and my, on my stomach area. I can't remember how many times a day. And uh, the federal government paid for it. I guess with a grant. You know, not to me personally, but you know, to the Stanford. And they sent me home with a bunch of stuff. I had to keep it in the freezer, shoot it into my stomach area so many times a day. And, uh, ooh, yeah. That was a pretty weird time for me. Anyhow, I, uh, I was going to, to you know, 12 step meetings all the time. Um, <laughs> walking with Otto Walker, looking like he had AIDS. That's a, yeah, that was in the middle of the AIDS thing. And the, when anybody looked with skinny with their hair falling out, they, that's what they thought you had. But no, I didn't have AIDS, people. I, I had leukemia. Wow. Yeah, my son was, uh, he was in a, he was in a, uh, one of those high schools that were for, you know, art, art things, and, uh, he was just, I can't remember what musical he was in, and he had a large part in it. And I went, 
I went on my walker. <laughs> Can't remember who drove me there. But, uh, yeah, I looked pretty bad. And uh, when I walked into the lobby, all the people were scooting back from me. <laughs> uh, and when he had a... He was singing away and he, he had a big part in that. Uh, he, was, he had a standing ovation. I could barely stand up. People give me the side eye. Yeah. Anyhow. This stuff was supposed to soak into the... Look, I can tell that it's not soaking in right there and over there where it's lighter colored. Uh, I'll probably come out two more times today and do this. I don't know how long. Seven days according to what I saw on Google. But the... Uh, the cement ain't really cured for up to 28 days, it said. It said to water it up to seven days. I don't know if you should continue after that or not. I don't think it would hurt it, but I just want it to help. I want this thing to, to last a long time. Not to crumble up, not to crack where it's not supposed to crack. Of course, uh, that guy I worked for, he used to, uh, he was, used to put grooves in with a special tool while it was still wet. These guys came back with a saw. They <laughs> sawed grooves into it. Well, that's all right. Same, same deal. Same purpose. All cement is going to crack sooner or later. You just want to control where it's cracking. And that's what these grooves are for. So it cracks in the right places. In the groove. Okay. I hope I hope this got it and I can show it to you guys on my next video. And I, I hope I can Find somebody to help me put this building up. Ooh, look at that. That's not a big grasshopper. It's not like a Mormon cricket. But I think I saw one earlier today when I was taking my prayer walk through the field. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. This cost me a whole lot. Okay, it's... July 21st and uh, I'm just making this little short thing to put on what I what I uh, recorded today which will be immediately following <laughs> okay I'm going on my prayer walk I just finished my what I call my set prayers they're kind of prayers by rote and I usually just talk to the Lord about things right now, but I wanted to talk about the book of Hebrews and Bible studies because uh, my last Bible study didn't go so good because of uh, air conditioning noise, fan noises, uh, even a train going by, and uh, my audio picks up all that stuff and had my voice so low, <laughs> I could even barely hear it. But I put it out there anyhow because it was such a long one, I didn't want to do it over. Hey, see that? I got a crew, and it cost me a pretty penny, but they're gonna come in, and, and they, the guy said he could put that building up in a week with, a, with the crew he's got. Anyhow, it's a, uh, 
it's pretty much doubled the price. <laughs> the, the, all the construction fees, that getting that and the building put up, pretty much almost doubled the price of what the uh, cost would have been if, if I didn't have to do any construction at all. Whoa, look. Cloud going over the sun. Anyhow. Anyhow, going back to the book of Hebrews and that last Bible study I did, it was intended to be an introduction. And it turned into a long one because, well, the book of Hebrews is 13 chapters and there's a lot in there. And, um, it's a, it's a really complicated book. And it's not exactly meant for Gentiles, which is what most Christians are. Yes, there are Jewish Christians still, but, uh, and even the Jewish people nowadays don't worship God the same way they did back when that book was written. And I'll tell you why. Because the Jewish worship, the Jewish theology, everything they knew about God and how they acted towards Him revolved around the temple. And that book, the book of Hebrews, a letter to the Hebrews, was written while the temple worship was still in force and many Jewish Christians went to the temple. So, what is to say that uh, I would like to, I would like to bring forth is that many Jewish Christians were still going to temple worship and Jesus had predicted that the temple would someday be destroyed. Well, what happened was is the temple was destroyed in AD 70. Only 40 years, and remember 40 years is the length of a biblical generation. M most of us modern Americans think of 25 years being a generation. Every 25 years is a new generation. Well, the Bible reckons it at 40 years. So, only a generation after Jesus was crucified, the temple was destroyed by the Romans. And exactly how Jesus said, not one stone was left standing. They tumbled them down the hill. That western wall the Jews go to to pray nowadays, it was a retaining wall on the side of the mountain to keep the mountain from sliding underneath it where the temple was. Anyhow, the uh, temple worship was so important that when the temple was destroyed, many rabbis declared that worship to God was impossible. Praying to God would be impossible without the temple. Of course, many others um, said they, they, they could keep worshiping and praying to God. And that's where the modern Judaism that we know came from. It's from <laughs> the rabbis who said, we can still pray to God. And yes, it's true. They could still pray to God. And they do. They're praying to the same God we do. We're just, uh, we're just going through Jesus Christ, who is the express image of God. And that word, express image, is character in the Greek. And it has to do with minting money, and I've talked about it before how Jesus Christ is is what God spent 
And it's what bought Jesus Christ, bought us with his blood. But I, I don't want to go into all that gospel. I just wanted to talk about the temple. I wanted to talk about how important temple worship was to the Jews of Jesus' time. And that when the temple was destroyed, it was necessary for the Jewish Christians who were still going to the temple. And remember, in the book of Acts, you got, you got Peter and the other apostles and Joseph going into the temple. Anyhow, the temple was destroyed and it became necessary to realize that Jesus Christ is our true high priest in the heavenly temple of which the earthly temple was just that, an earthly temple. I hope, I hope the light didn't blind y'all. Yeah, I've been waiting for this field to get like this, make it easier to walk in. It's still kind of hard to walk over there. But yeah. <laughs> I can walk back here now. I couldn't hardly walk to that tumble-down shack just a few weeks ago. Hard to get to it. Anyhow, Jesus Christ is our heavenly high priest. And his blood is more effectual than the blood of bulls and goats like they used in the earthly temple. And he went into the heavenly temple and sprinkled his blood for the remission of our sins. And he was only had to do that one time. And he didn't have to do it for himself because he was sinless. The high priest in the earthly temple had to do it year by year. And he had to sacrifice for his own sins first before he could do that for the sins of the people. But anyhow, what I'm trying to bring out is that we have a high priest who is in the heavenly temple and he sprinkled his blood for us and that is effectual for eternity for all time, even beyond time. And uh, we as Christians, we Gentiles don't understand how important that was to the, uh, oh, what are you doing? You came out here because you miss me? <laughs> My buddy. Anyhow, us Gentile Christians don't understand exactly how they really must have felt. And the Jews today are, uh, are halfway there, in other words, because they realize that they, they don't need that earthly temple to pray. But there are some who, who, who believe that they need to rebuild it, whether they do or don't. But if they do, that may be a fulfillment of prophecy of the second coming of Jesus. But I'm not sure because I'm not, I'm not one of these prophecy maniacs. I, I think that if, if something happens, then it must be a fulfillment of, of the will of God. If it don't happen, then it wasn't the will of God. Anyhow, I think that's about all I really wanted to say is that the uh, the uh, epistle to the Hebrews was was all about the difference between the earthly worship and the heavenly worship and the earthly worship at the temple was going to stop and Jesus predicted it and now we have a high priest in heaven in a heavenly temple. Praise Jesus. Hallelujah.